Hello to all. I am Vishnu. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to make toxicology an easy subject to remember. Now, you know very well that uh, when it comes to PharmD PB in their first year itself, toxicology is there. And when it comes to PharmD in their fourth year, there is a subject called clinical toxicology. And anybody who is interested in learning about poisoning, about toxicology, you can watch this video till the end. See, basically you need to understand uh, the, the easiest way to remember toxicology is a simple equation. Toxicology is equal to extension of pharmacology. Toxicology is equal to extension of pharmacology. That means pharmacology means you are studying the pharmacological actions of a medicine. So pharmacological actions of a medicine are classified into two. One is called mechanism of action in which you get the beneficial effect of the medicine. And the other is called mechanism of side effect where you get the detrimental or harmful effects of the medicine. Toxicology means this harmful of effect of the medicine in a higher manner. So that is called toxicology. That's why I said toxicology is an extension of pharmacology. Okay. So basically uh, how to study toxicology. So it actually depends on the chapter. You can't say that all chapters have the same format. But let me tell you one thing, if you are a student who is interested in toxicology, you should always be an expert in studying basic principles of management of poisoning. Let me tell you the best book in my, pers in my personal, because I had been an assistant professor and I had taught that subject and I had been a student also and then I referred this book. And now also when I read that book, I'm always amazed. Let me tell you the best book to study toxicology is Poisoning and Drug Overdose by Kent R. Olson. This is one of the best books to study. Obviously, uh, perspectives may matter. But from my teaching experience, from my uh, learning experience, and even now when I learn toxicology, Kent R. Olson is a book that simply amazes me. Now, let me tell you the reason why. First reason, most of the authors are PharmD professionals, so you get a personal advantage in it when it comes to your course. And that's not it. The second advantage is, if you look at the first chapter of Kentar Olson, they have mentioned about different symptoms associated with poisoning and their treatment. Like for example, if you have hypotension, what are the drugs that cause hypotension? How to manage hypotension? If you are suffering from coma due to a particular poison, what are the different drugs that cause coma? How to manage coma? If you are having hypertension, which are the different drugs that cause hypertension? How to manage hypertension? So the benefit is it's actually a very big chapter. It means it's like 60 to 70 odd pages. But if you study that chapter, the benefit is after that, whenever you study individual poisons, the symptoms you can correlate with the first chapter. Like for example, benzodiazepine poisoning, they lead to coma because they activate the GABA too much. And GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter which causes generalized CNS depression leading to coma. Now already in general principles in management of poisoning, you have studied the management of coma. So here you can apply it. Like in mathematics, we say applying equation 1 into equation 2. Same thing. You can apply chapter 1 into many other chapters inside toxicology. V. V. Pillai is a very good book. It's an Indian book and it has, it has been updated since a lot of editions. So there are some chapters which you can study from V. V. Pillai. It is amazing. If you want to study about uh, arthropod stings and bites, um, honeybee, wasp and all these bites, there is a chapter like that. V. V. Pillai is very good. If you want to study about, uh, you know, this thing, uh, to some extent, if you want to study about uh, organic uh, chemicals, for example, uh, oxalic acid and all this kind of, if you want to study about alkali and acidic poisoning, alkali and acidic poisoning, V. V. Pillai is a very good book. So there are certain chapters, especially if you want to study about snake bite poisoning, V. V. Pillai is a very good book. But all the other chapters, even it, it, it depends on perspectives, but I believe that all the other chapters, most of the other chapters, 
you can try Kentar Olson. Its PDF is available online. If you don't have the PDF, you can please WhatsApp me. I'll share the PDF with you. I think I have the recent edition. It's 2018 or 19. I don't remember. You can easily check it out. Now let's come to how to study toxicology. So basically, as I said before, it depends on chapter to chapter. Now, you cannot compare organophosphate poisoning with snake bite poisoning. The headings will be different. But generally speaking, you can see what is the use of that particular toxin. Now, you have to see whether it is a toxin or it is a medicine come toxin. For example, organophosphate, they don't have any direct use in our body. So if you look at the uses of organophosphate, mainly they are used as insecticides, herbicides, pesticides and all these kind of things. They are not used in the human body directly. But there are certain medications which can be toxins if you are overdosing on them. For example, it can be antipsychotics, it can be antidepressants, especially tricyclic antidepressants, SSRIs, it can be Mao inhibitors. So all those poisonings, they have, they have medicinal uses, right? So first we can focus on the uses of those uh, particular poisoning. You, you, you have a chapter known as heavy metal poisoning also. You have to study five metals in that. Arsenic, lead, mercury, iron, copper, etc. like that. So first heading is you have to study the uses. Just mention in points. I always tell you whenever you make your notes, please make in points. If you want sample notes of toxicology, I'll be very happy to share it with you. Next, mechanism of toxicity. This is something that is very important. Whenever we study pharmacology, the biggest reason that we forget things is we do not try to remember the mechanism of adverse effect or mechanism of side effect. We always study the side effect as it is. So here also you need to understand the mechanism of toxicity like benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepines, they enter into the body in massive dose. They go to the CNS. They activate GABA in massive amounts that causes generalized CNS depression that leads to the blah, blah, blah signs and symptoms. So mechanism of toxicity should be there. Then we come to toxicokinetics. As I said, pharmacokinetics is there. So when you are taking massive amounts of a poison, it also has its own absorption, distribution, you know, elimination, whatever it is. So you can see that. Then we come to the signs and symptoms. So we have acute poisoning if you are taking massive amount in one time and then we have chronic poisoning if you are taking sustained quantity for a long duration. Then we come to diagnosis, how we can diagnose. So most of the poisons we can diagnose based on the symptoms itself like pinpoint pupils for opioid poisoning, garlic like taste if the person has taken organophosphate because pesticides usually have garlicky order. Then we come to management. Management is classified into four. One is called emergency and supportive measures. So there we use mechanical ventilation, symptomatic treatment and all. Then we come to specific drugs and antidotes. So for example, tricyclic antidepressant poisoning, we have an antidote, sodium bicarbonate or something. Propranolol poisoning, we usually use glucagon like that. Paracetamol poisoning, n acetylcysteine like that. Then we come to decontamination procedures. So decontamination, you can check it out what it is, activated charcoal, uh, you know, MSS, whole bowel irrigation and all these things. And the last is the most important that is enhanced elimination. Like there are certain poisons which you have to perform hemodialysis, you know, any kind of uh, forced diuresis or hemodialysis to get it eliminated from the body. Now, please remember if a particular molecule has a high volume of distribution or if its plasma protein binding is very high, then you cannot get it eliminated through dialysis. So the, we have amphetamines which cannot be eliminated through dialysis. We have verapamil, it cannot be eliminated through dialysis. We have organophosphates, opioids, they cannot be eliminated through dialysis. Imipramine, it cannot be eliminated through dialysis. Digoxin, diazepam, they cannot be eliminated through dialysis. So that also you need to consider. So this is just an idea that I wanted to give you as in how you can make your toxicology study a fruitful one and easy to remember as well. If you want further details, then please make sure you can WhatsApp me. I'll definitely be happy to be of service. So thanks for listening to me. See you in the next video. Until then, it's bye.